This week, we celebrated a huge milestone at Pixel Haze. We officially launched SquareForge, our not so little template builder for Squarespace. This is a platform that breaks down templates into individual segments. It utilizes one of the most powerful features on Squarespace, which is the option to add those sections as favorites. And then it allows you to mix and match them to create billions of page layout combinations. What's more, you can also take these layouts and tweak and adjust them and make them your own so you're not looking like the same old templates. Squarespace has always been pretty good for this, but we feel that SquareForge has taken it to another level and we've been using it in-house since the start of January 2024. We know that it works really well because we've used it on over 75 websites and counting. We are really looking forward to taking it to the next level because we've added nearly 100 new layouts in the last month alone. We've got another major update coming in late winter, spring 2025, and we're hoping to collaborate with other platforms for Squarespace and other plugin providers to give you even more value within the toolkit. In fact, alongside SquareForge's official launch, we've also launched the Pixel Haze Power Pack, our full bundle for professional Squarespace designers that will help shave off up to 50% of your build time and provide you with a load of goodies like the Squarespace Tools Pro Extension tool from the Square Websites team. There's also one other little announcement. I finally turned the microphone up the right way because I know that was bugging a couple of you as well. As we move into 2025, we're really excited about what we can do with SquareForge and how we can develop it. If you're interested in getting involved, especially if you're a professional designer with a good number of websites under your belt, then get in touch because there could be ways that we could work together. But today I'm going to show you some of the latest designs and explain what we can do with them. And before we wrap up this introduction, if you have no interest in buying SquareForge, don't worry, I won't take it personally, but head over to squareforge.net and have a look at some of the layouts that we've got in there to give you inspiration about what we can do with Squarespace and the Fluid Engine. Let's crack on. Remember, you can check these layouts on squareforge.net and they'll be in the main menu system. We are building a catalog or directory system for the layouts that will just neaten it up a little bit. But what we've got here is the 1.2 master, which is our latest version, which has got all of the layouts in. This is what you get when you purchase SquareForge, and then you can duplicate this master template as many times as you want for multiple projects. It's a buy once and then reuse as many times as you can. So if you go to pages on this left menu here, we can see the main navigation is completely empty. This is deliberately done this way, so it just makes it easier for you to start building websites, and then you can delete the support page as and when you need to and of course change the main call to action button from it. But let's have a look at some of these design sections. And the one main upgrade that we've made is we've now added unique identifiers for each section design. We've also got rid of the blue band. We used to update this depending on your own branding and then we would add your logo, add your brand colors in. But what we found based on feedback is to just rather have a more streamlined, simpler divide between each section. So this is added using some custom code now. So once it's in place, it will just add these sections and it's only applied to these pages that are in the folders outlined here. As we go through, the numbering convention is quite straightforward. And that brings us on to one of our new designs. So here, a classic 008 is brand new for this autumn. We've got a title, subtitle on the left, call to action button, an option to put an image in here, and a background image behind. This could be replaced by an abstract pattern texture, or even something like a wood brain effect, and then a photo showing more detail in here. You could also add a block around it to add a Polaroid style effect around that image. And I know I've created tutorials in the past that show you just how to do that. Example here, nice straightforward option where we've got the image offset to the left and then the text offset to the right. The image height can be expanded to make it easy to navigate through. This one, the same again, but this could work really well with a cutout image. So with a transparent background and image that just cut into the hero section, and we've got the gap at the top here. Ultimately though, turning this into this style is really quick. We could easily drop this section down and then change the section colors. If this is all confusing, do check out our beginners course for SquareForge because it goes through the entire process of how we can set up these sections, wireframe our designs, and then from that point, start customizing them accordingly. I say it's a relatively new feature. It's been around for a while now, but the option to create custom underlines on certain textiles. So if you find that there's a section that you really like, but it doesn't have that feature, you can just add it in via the editor really easily. As we scroll down, we've got some of these that are the original designs. From this point forward, any new designs we'll be adding to SquareForge will automatically be added to the bottom. This one's a good example here of a really simple streamlined section design. 
And of course we can just click on the favorite option then to reuse it on multiple pages. This one I really like, because if you get the right type of image, sometimes we'll go with a gradient background and we'll go from solid color on the one side to a photo on the other side. And then we can easily see the text overlay on top of the image, but this outline border effect essentially just uses a border on the text block itself. If I have a look at the background, but we've set the background color and then made it transparent. So it just acts as a border without a background. Simple update. And if you wanted to, you could easily go through here, add a corner radius and just put a rounded corners on there. In fact, let's add a border radius on this design. So I'll put in maybe 50 pixel border radius. So that's nice and obvious. I'm not going to save this. We're going to exit it. Or in fact, I'll just press command Z to undo it. But that just shows an example. We can also go into the button styling via this pencil icon here, then design. And we can change the button styles for this option. So there's a few clicks to get to that setting. But that means we can change our buttons to solid with rounded corners or even pill shaped like a lozenge, which can work really well for sites where you need a softer touch. I don't want to save that because I want these to be fully adaptable and easy to update. This is another good example where we've got a background image and then a zoomed in photo focused on a certain element. In fact, this section here could work as our main hero. And then if we were to go up to this section, we could have it further down the page as a secondary hero section, combining the two elements that follow the same theme with this outline block effect around the titles. That could work really nicely. I'm just going to exit that without saving. Let's have a look at some of the other options. We've got hero sub pages, which are like the ones we've just been through, but these have been more condensed to fit perfectly on an about us page, a service or product page on our site, or even the top for a contact page. So they follow the same set, the same theme. It just means you don't have to go and adjust them manually yourselves. You can pick these out. Content short, I think we've added quite a few designs in at the bottom here. Some layer options utilizing the line effect. And I won't have time to go through every new design feature that we've added. Some design features are really simple like this. We've been working with designers over the past nearly 12 months to gain feedback over the layouts that they want to add in that are customizable enough for them to be able to take it in their own direction, but still make their job that much easier. And this is an effect we used to get in Squarespace in 7.0. So we've recreated this for 7.1 with the overlapping text block over top of the image. So loads of options in here. We've added some new pages, but most of the time we've gone and updated some of the existing pages. This is a brand new feature as well, where we've got more design led announcement bars. So we can bring in images into these sections as well, if we wanted to really take it much further, but we've got a strong call to actions using these Chevron effects, which are in as icons. So they're really quick loading. And if you want sections to stand out, that can work really well for you. I'm just looking at some of these other options now to, before we wrap up. So we've added in a section like this with a numbered one, two, three step, where you cannot easily swap these for images or for graphical numbers, which you can go a little bit more creative with. But the idea of the image block sitting behind, again, they can have rounded corners or be in oval pill shaped to match the design of your site. So much that we can do with these designs. There's now 375 in here at the point of recording this session. And there's so much more that we can do with SquareForge going forward. But as I said at the start, if you just want some inspiration, Jump on to squareforge.net. These layouts will all be in place in the next few days. We are porting the latest designs across into the front facing squareforge.net website. And it won't be too long before they're in place. Anyway, hope you found this helpful to see some of the new designs that are in Squareforge. We're really excited about the next steps for 2025 and beyond. And as I mentioned at the start, if you want to get involved, if you're a professional designer, give me a shout and I'll catch you next time. Cheers.